Good morning, Year 10. I hope you're well and having a lovely day. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at texts on the theme of women in prison. For this lesson, you will need Text 1, A Visit to Newgate Prison, and Text 2, The Real Story of My Year in a Woman's Prison. A pen, a highlighter, and your English language books. So please take a moment to make sure you have everything you need for this lesson. Please could you write the date and the title. The title is Paper 1, Exam Skills, AO1 and AO2. For your do now, I'd like you to brain dump everything you can remember about Paper 1. So we've just gone through an entire Paper 1 reading section, so hopefully you can remember quite a bit. Pause the video to do that now. Okay, so what I'd like you to do next is spend 15 minutes reading through both texts. As you read, Remember to highlight any interesting words or techniques that you notice. You will be asked to analyse language and structure later, so it may be useful to highlight these things as you read. So pause the video for about 15 minutes to do that now. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is answer the following questions. Read lines 5 to 18 again. Find two quotes which show the poor condition of the old woman. How do the old woman and the young girl behave differently? and explain in your own words how Dickens presents the prison in this paragraph. So please do copy out the questions and answer them. You've got two minutes to copy the questions and five minutes to answer them. Okay, so these are your answers. For 1A, you've got a yellow, haggard, decrepit old woman in a tattered gown and the remains of an old tall bonnet, poverty-stricken object, a creature so borne down in soul and body by excess of misery and destitution. So destitution means poverty. B. The old woman seems upset. Sharp, abrupt cry of grief. But the girl is perfectly unmoved, showing that the mother is more emotional than the daughter. Perhaps, um, maybe because prison life has hardened her. And then C. He presents it as an inhumane place, more fit for animals than people, through the use of his words like cage and den. So please do make sure you've noted this down in your book. Okay, so we're now moving on to question two, which is a brief comparison of the two texts. So what are the similarities and differences between the way women's prisons are presented in these two extracts? So remember, for this question, you only need to provide three similarities or differences with evidence. And you may want to remember the Christmas tree, which is a good way to um, keep in your mind how you answer this question. It doesn't matter whether they are all similarities or all differences or a mixture of the two. What I'd like you to do is write out this question and then spend no more than 10 minutes answering it in your books. Remember, you need three points and each point need, needs evidence from both text one and text two. Pause the video, please, to do that now. Okay, so these are some possible answers. In terms of similarities, and please can you copy these out? So in terms of similarities, both texts show relatives and friends visiting the prison inmates, a kind of iron cage from which the friends of the female prisoners communicate with them. Visiting hours began at 3pm. Both texts show visitors sharing information about family with the prisoners, inquiring after Jem in text 1 and he said that he had talked to my parents that they were holding up in text 2. Both describe the conditions inside the prison as unpleasant. Dickens mentions the thick bars and the iron cage, and in text two, the narrator mentions the decrepit bathroom. In terms of differences, in text one, the inmates don't seem happy to see their visitors and show little emotion, but neither hope, condolence, regret, nor affection was expressed on either side. But in text two, the writer shows emotion and affection. I had to leave the bubble of love around our card table. In text one, Dickens suggests that the prisoners have no remorse and that they are victims of poverty in an uncaring society, born and bred in neglect and vice, whereas the narrator of text two seems to take more responsibility and show remorse for what she has done. I felt more guilt and shame witnessing their worry than when I stood in front of the judge, and it had been terrible standing in that courtroom. Dickens presents the inmates as poor and not caring about their appearance a squalid-looking woman in a slovenly, thick-bordered cap, 
whereas the narrator in, a narrator in text two wanted to look good for her visitor. What would Larry think when he saw me now? So once again, please do make sure you've written these out so you have a full range of possible answers. Okay, so we're now going to move on to question three. Question three is about text two, the story of my year in a woman's prison. Explore how the writer uses language and structure in her autobiography to present her experience of life in prison. Support your ideas by referring to the text using relevant subject terminology. Write the response in your book. So what I'd like you to do is write out the question and then spend 20 minutes trying to answer it. Remember, it's worth 12 marks. You should ideally make at least two language points and at least two structural points. Refer to quotes and consider the effect of the language and structure techniques. Okay, so can you pause the video now for 20 minutes to have a go doing that yourself? Okay, so these are possible language points. I looked undecorated and to my eye unfeminine. No jewellery, no makeup, no embellishments at all. Emotive language to show she feels less like a woman in prison. The list also emphasises this. I could relax the taut watchfulness and caution that had governed my every move for the last three days and almost forget where I was. The word taut suggests tension and the nouns show how she can't relax or let her guard down. The bubble of love around our card table. This metaphor shows how precious their time together is. The dark guards are described as brisk and businesslike. The alliteration and cold adjectives suggest that the guards are doing their job and not making it harder for the prisoners. I could completely forget about the human stew that lay on the other side of the visiting room doors. The metaphor here gives us a hint of how unpleasant life in a prison really is. She isn't hiding the truth from her visitors here. In terms of structure, you could mention these points. The first person narrative gives the reader insight into her thoughts and feelings. What would Larry think of me now? The use of this rhetorical question shows her thoughts and doubts. In paragraph two, detailed clinical details about procedure show how regimented life in prison is. Hugging and kissing your visitors, no tongue. The bracketed, ex the bracketed, exclama sorry, the bracketed exclamatory remark here adds a little humour but emphasises how restrained they must be. You've also got contrast between the way she presents prison life to her visitors. I told him to look around. Did the other prisoners look so bad? He thought they did not. And the reality, human stew. So please do take the time to not note down these possible answers. Okay, so I'd, li I'd like you to read a sample response now. The writer uses language and structure to present her life in prison. Firstly, she uses the first person to tell her story, showing that it is autobiographical and giving the reader a more personal view of her situation. She also uses emotive language to show how the prison makes her feel less of a woman. I looked undecorated and to my eye unfeminine. No jewellery, no makeup, no embellishments at all. The word undecorated and embellishments suggests the idea that women are meant to look pretty and beautiful. The fact that the lack of these things makes her feel unfeminine conveys to the reader how far she is from her usual self and the things that make her feel womanly. Is there anything that could be used to m improve this response other than making it longer? Pause the video for five minutes to jot down your ideas. So the first line is too vague and doesn't really say anything. It would be better to add what she is presenting in the extract. What kind of life does she have? In this extract, the writer presents the difficulties of her life in prison and tries to convey to the reader the harsh realities of her daily life. Okay, so um, with regards to the last answer, of course there are other things that could be improved, but that was just a basic idea of one thing that you could improve. So thank you very much for your hard work today. Hopefully you're now consolidating your knowledge about paper one and the various questions. We've been looking at it quite a lot over the course of the year. So hopefully that'll put you in a really good position for when you come back in March to do your mock exams. So as always, let me know if you have any questions um, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.